Today I'm going to talk about one of the biggest problems that we have with digital photography. Now this problem occurs mostly for new photographers, but it's also an issue for experienced photographers as well. And it's not very well addressed on YouTube or in forums. And that's the issue of camera shake. Camera shake is a big issue. It ruins more photographs than any other problem in digital photography. Today, I'm going to give you multiple ways to fix camera shake so that you won't have to worry about it again. It's a terrible issue, camera shake, because your image looks great on the back of your screen because it's only small. Once you upload it on your computer, then it becomes a bit of a problem because you can see that shakiness in your image. Now, camera shake occurs when we're taking a photograph and we're moving our camera slightly. It tends to record a blur on your image. Now, it's different to an out-of-focus image. An out-of-focus image means that you're not focused on the correct part of your photograph. Your scene is sharp in one particular area, but it's not sharp on your main subject or where it should be sharp. That's a focus issue. A camera shake image is uniformly blurry over the whole image because the whole image is blurred as you move that camera around. You can see the difference in these images. Now we can also blur an image with subject blur. Our subject can move during the exposure. That's a different issue, we're not going to address that today, but camera shake is the issue that I'm going to go through today, and I'm gonna give you multiple ways to fix it. Now the first way we can fix camera shake, or we can help with camera shake, is to use our image stabilizer in our camera. Most modern cameras, or I'd say all modern cameras, have some sort of image stabilizing in them, either in the lens or the camera body. The image stabilizer is a system that helps to stabilize your picture even though your camera is moving. So you can be moving your camera a little bit and that image stabilizer helps to electronically stabilize the picture so you don't get so much camera shake. It's not gonna work if you're shaking your camera like this, but a reasonable amount of movement can be helped with your image stabilizer. Different cameras, more expensive cameras tend to have better systems but every camera's got some sort of image stabilizer, so that's the first thing you could do to help with your camera shake issue. The second thing, and probably most important, is to keep your shutter speeds up to the fast end of the spectrum. The faster your shutter speed, the less chance your camera has to show that motion. If you're shooting at, say, a quarter of a second or half a second shutter speed, then that movement is gonna be noticeable. You can't hold your camera still for a quarter of a second you're gonna get that camera shake. So keep those shutter speeds up faster. The general accepted thing is to keep your shutter speed above one one hundredth of a second if you're using a standard lens. If you're using a telephoto lens, then things change because you're zoomed in closer to your subject, your image is bigger in the frame, so that shake is magnified. So the thing to do then is to use the rule that says if you're using a 200 millimeter lens, one two hundredth of a second should be the slowest shutter speed that you use to prevent camera shake. If you're using a 500 millimeter lens, keep your shutter speed above one five hundredth of a second because that's gonna help you to keep that image nice and stable. Now different people can operate in different ways. Some people may be able to handhold their camera to a slower shutter speed. That's fine and you can brag about it and tell everybody about it, but generally speaking, most people need to keep their shutter speeds up reasonably fast to prevent that camera shake. Now, this means a couple of things. The first one is that if you can't get your shutter speed up fast enough to maintain the exposure that you need for your image, just increase your ISO. Push that ISO up. Don't be one of these people who has to shoot at 100 or 200 ISO because they're worried about noise. Take your image up to whatever ISO you need to get the image that you want it's still gonna be a beautiful image whether you shoot it at 400 or 1000 ISO, so do that. The second thing is try not to use auto exposure. Auto exposure means that you're out of control with your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO sometimes. So try to use manual settings if you can because you're in control of that shutter speed. Shutter priority is a, an option maybe because you can set your shutter speed to whatever value you need to prevent that camera shake. But you're still out of control with your aperture. But I much prefer to shoot on manual for those reasons. 
because I can control my shutter speed, my aperture, uh, and my ISO myself and prevent that camera shake whenever I need to. Holding your camera properly is going to make a huge difference to this camera shake issue as well. Learn to hold your camera the way your camera manufacturer specifies. Left hand underneath your lens and your camera so that you can zoom and focus with this hand. If you're left-handed, you're out of luck because they don't make left-handed cameras. So left hand underneath, right hand move it in to push buttons and turn dials. A lot of the um, important stuff is up around this top corner. Tuck your elbows into your ribs and press your eyebrow against that viewfinder. It allows you three points of contact to be able to hold that camera really still and then just squeeze that shutter button. Don't press it because you're gonna move that camera, just squeeze the shutter button slightly. If you're a live view shooter, that's fine. You just need to be conscious that you're not gonna be able to hold that camera as stable as you could if you're doing it in the conventional way. So use higher shutter speeds. Rely on your image stabilizer to, um, to control that camera shake. But I think you're much better off if you can to use that viewfinder, particularly in situations where light is a bit low and you're gonna have an issue with this camera shake. You can brace yourself against something. Brace yourself against a tree, brace your camera against a post, um, maybe a picnic table or something that allows you to stabilize that camera a little bit more. That will allow you to drop those shutter speeds down a little bit more, um, but if there's nothing available, then it's not an option. Camera supports. A camera support can make a huge difference to this camera shake issue. I know a lot of people don't like tripods, but a tripod just extends the possibilities immensely for your creative photography. I would never be without my tripod. It gives me so many things that I can do that I just can't do with a handheld image. So get yourself a good quality tripod. It's no use skimping on them. A lot of people spend a lot of money on their cameras and their lenses and their lighting equipment and then buy a cheapo tripod. Spend money on your tripod. It's gonna be a great investment. I've got a tripod here that I spent too much money on when I bought it, but I use it every day and I've had it for 35 years. So that to me is a cheap investment. Smaller, weaker tripods, cheaper tripods can still work as long as you don't extend them up. Just keep them short, put them on a picnic table, put them on a wall, just so that they're not extended very much, and then it can still be reasonably stable. Use a monopod. Monopods are great. They're a very undervalued camera accessory. Monopods allow you to do so many things in photography without the hassle of a tripod. A monopod is simply a single leg that attaches to the bottom of your camera, rests on the ground, and stabilizes your camera in the vertical direction. It can still allow you to drop those shutter speeds down a little bit without camera shake, or prevent camera shake if you're using a normal shutter speed. And a monopod allows you to move and pan your camera quite quickly for sport or wildlife or those sort of things. It doesn't take up much space. Most monopods you can attach to your camera bag and it's not a huge thing to be carrying around. Another technique you can use to help with camera shake is to breathe, breathe slowly. A lot of competition rifle shooters learn to breathe properly and control their breathing so that they can keep that rifle sight on the target perfectly. Photographers can do exactly the same. That's why they call it shooting photographs. You can just learn to breathe slowly, calmly. When you've exhaled, you can just press that shutter, squeeze that shutter, and that will help with that camera movement. Stay calm, don't get too stressed, because when you're stressed, you're moving around a little bit more. Stay calm, relax, work slowly. It'll help you to enjoy your photography, as well as get more good shots, as well as keep this camera shake to a minimum. A couple of out of the box techniques um, that you can use to stabilize your camera. One of them is to use a bean bag. There are bean bags available that you can rest on a surface or rest on your car window so that you can rest your camera on that bean bag. The bean bag takes up the shape of the surface it's resting on and the surface of your camera and allows you to keep that camera stable when you're shooting. It doesn't take up much space. You can make one up yourself. The second out of the box technique is one that I saw from a wedding photographer years ago that I used to know, and she swore by the string method. She attached a piece of string to the bottom of her camera, made a loop in the bottom of the string to put her foot through, and she could stretch the string from her foot 
so that she stabilized her camera on that piece of string. She swore by it, she said it worked really well. I've never tried it, but that's something I can try in the future. A piece of string doesn't take up much space in your camera bag, but make sure it's not stretchable string. Make sure it's good solid string that you can put tension on and it's gonna to help to stabilize your camera. Now it is also possible to buy gimbal heads for your tripod. A lot of wildlife photographers swear by these gimbal heads. They're a little bit expensive, but it allows you to stabilize your camera. You can stabilize it anywhere you want and still allow you to move your camera around. A video gimbal is not really gonna work for still photography, but these gimbal heads for your tripod can be a, a boon and can be really good for that sort of photography. Of course, there are some situations where camera shake is a good thing. When we're intentionally moving our camera, like for intentional camera movement, ICM photography, we can move our camera as we push the shutter using a slower shutter speed to give us a more artistic um, interpretation of our image, our landscape or our subject. I often use flash combined with a slow shutter speed and that allows me to get a sharp image of my subject but then a little bit of movement around the outside. There are lots of situations where a bit of flash and a bit of movement is going to get you some really unusual images, stuff that other people just don't think to shoot. So have a look at some of these images. The camera shake is the thing that really makes these images stand out. Now the last thing that I'm gonna to mention today is to use flash. Learn flash. I mean, that's one of the major issues that I have with photographers is that they don't bother learning flash. Flash goes off at a fraction of a second, so it can freeze your subject quite perfectly. You can get flashes that fire at 20,000th of a second or 40,000th of a second, which is gonna freeze anything um, that's, that the flash impinges on. So using flash will help that camera shake issue. Even using flash with a slower shutter speed can work. I often shoot with my flash that freezes my subject and my shutter speed's down around a 10th or a 20th of a second. My background's a little bit shaky, but it's less noticeable because my main subject, where the attention is in the image, is perfectly sharp. So flash can help in a number of different ways. You can use flash to give you a number of sharp images within the one photograph. There's lots of things we can use with flash to give us sharper, more crisp images. So there are a whole lot of ways to stabilize your camera and prevent camera shake. Using two or three of these is probably enough to prevent camera shake. It means that you're gonna get a lot more usable images and be less disappointed when your fantastic image shows camera shake.